are black eyed children real? In today's video, this is exactly what we're going to dive into. Now, imagine taking a nightly walk in your neighborhood. It's a quiet night with a light breeze. No one else is out, just you and the brisk night sky. As you round a corner, you encounter a person who is abnormally still. He has the eyes of a shark, dead and black. He grins at you and asks you where you live. Can he follow you home? Are you alone? A scary incident for anyone, right? What could be scarier? Well, imagine if that person with nefarious intention was a child. The phenomena of the black-eyed children has been around for many years. People claiming to see children that are still as a predator about to strike with the eyes that are as black as the void have been circulating on the internet since its inception. Could you stare into the lifeless eyes of a child born to be a predator and make it out alive? Before we get into today's video, be sure to go ahead and smack that like and subscribe button because I regularly release storytelling of the mysterious and supernatural. Let's go. While many claim these stories began in the 1980s in the US, the most concrete tales of these kids start as recently as 96. Texas-based reporter Brian Bethel wrote a ghost-related list including two stories of encounters that included children with completely blacked out eyes. One story of the black eyed children was local in Abilene, Texas. The other was all the way up in Portland, Oregon. Yet both tales were eerily similar. In both tales, people encountered children that made them uncomfortable. Sure, we've all had that experience while sitting down in Olive Garden, but these children didn't do anything bad necessarily. They were just too still and spoke eerily like adults from another time, overly polite with very punctual and older style vocabulary. The children in both stories demanded to be let in, whether the person was in a car or at home. The children also demanded to be let in and instilled an imposing fear in the person. The Bethel stories premiered online on Ouija.com, a 90s and early 2000s precursor to what is now modern-day creepypasta. Once creepypastas blew up and made a name for itself in the digital realm, the stories of black-eyed kids became one of the biggest legends around. So big, in fact, that years later on an FAQ was opened up due to huge demand for all fans who wanted more details. And in 2012, Bethel's findings on the Black Eyed Kids even made their debut on the cult classic TV show Monsters and Mysteries in America, which is now on Discovery Plus, now for you fans who can't get enough. Oddly, the legend of these black eyed children spreads around the world quickly, with people writing in various forms that they too had these bizarre encounters but were too afraid to voice their concern due to being mocked for being afraid of children. But were they just children? When Britain's The Daily Star published their own article about the black-eyed children, many wrote in speculating that the children could be everything from vampires to even ghosts. The facts that these children regularly demanded that their victims let them in is very telling within itself and oddly reminiscent of the vampire lore that goes back centuries. But why just children? Are these predators also shapeshifters that take on the form of something more innocent to trick their victims? Throughout history and in folklore, the idea of something morphing into a child to appear less threatening goes back thousands of years. In Judeo-Christian folklore, Demons are said to take on the form of children or use the voice of a child to make the victim more vulnerable and therefore more susceptible for possession, even possess actual children themselves. In Bavaria, Germany Annelies Michelle, who was a 16-year-old girl, grew up a devout Catholic. She went to church twice a week and was very well behaved and well liked at school. One day, she blacked out at school and lost all memory of what had happened to her. Her family said that her behavior was unusual and it was like she was in a trance-like state. After she blacked out a second time, a doctor had diagnosed her with temporal lobe epilepsy, 
which can cause blackening out as well as auditory hallucinations. She was given medication that Michelle claimed didn't work. She claimed she saw the devil everywhere and it kept telling her to harm herself and others. The family tried taking her to the church to get exercised, but the Catholic Church simply dismissed the claim and said she would keep taking her medication as directed by her doctor. It wasn't until Michelle began to eat spiders, coal, the heads of dead birds, her own urine, and would tear her clothes off her body that the church reevaluated Michelle's problem. It was then concluded that she might be demonically possessed as her character and abilities had changed so dramatically that external forces were considered a possibility. Sadly, Michelle died of starvation and dehydration shortly after which led to her priest performing the exorcism to be arrested, leading to one of the most well-known trials in all of Europe. Throughout the trial, the priest, Michelle's family, and witnesses all claimed that Michelle really was possessed and that the demon was the one who destroyed her body and let her rot away from the inside out. This was a beast that can only destroy from the inside. It could not have been seen with the naked eye. It was an infection of the soul. Naturally, these claims were dismissed as superstitious and having no factual claim, but what if there is some weight to the idea that something evil could infect the innocent, and a susceptible child. In these claims of possession, the possessed will often exhibit signs of superhuman strength, inhuman abilities, and have knowledge that no child or no ordinary person would know. What if these abnormally astute, unnerving black-eyed children were not evil, but were infected by it? What if it's not your home they want to be invited in? Of course, it isn't just the demonic of the underworld that can cause a child to suddenly be perceived as more than human. In the 19th century in Rhode Island, a farmer by the name of George Brown sadly lost his wife to a disease running rampant in New England at the time, consumption. This disease goes by a new name these days as tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a disease that can cause the patient to become paler, more fatigued, lose their appetite, have an appearance of sunken eyes and mouth due to rapid weight loss, obviously not a problem I have. In other words, they can look like the living dead. Mr. Brown's family all began to resemble each other, each one more pale and gaunt than the last as the disease began to spread throughout the household people in the town began whispering that it wasn't a disease that was infecting the family, but a supernatural monster. Mr. Brown was growing desperate. Two more of his precious children had perished suddenly, and his heart could not bear the pain anymore. There was a legend in New England that was based off of European lore that stated if consumption had taken a whole family, it could be the result of a curse that rendered one family member to inadvertently need to feed on the life force of other members to survive themselves. An undead member, if you will. Mr. Brown was willing to believe anything at this point as his mind was beginning to unravel from the grief. In an act of desperation, Mr. Brown, with the help of a few friends from the town, exhumed the bodies from other family members. His wife and eldest daughter were decaying and therefore innocent. The body of his other daughter, Mercy, on the other hand. Well, Mercy, despite being buried over nine weeks prior, was preserved. She still had blood in her organs and veins. This was enough evidence to the town that Mercy was the cursed one. The one who was draining the life force of other members of the family. The vampire. Members of the town used Mercy's body to show to the rest of the town that this was no case of consumption that was taking the Brown family. It was a vampiric infection. Mercy's heart and liver were burned and fed to her younger brother, who was the next Brown, to be suffering from this insufferable disease. Sadly, this remedy did not work, and Mercy's little brother died. This case inspired a wave of panic all throughout New England and people all over the East Coast in the U.S. had a case of vampire mania, not too dissimilar from the widespread panic of the Salem witch trials. This case of vampire-based mass hysteria 
became so widely reported and well known that it was a huge story across the pond in Europe as well. As a matter of fact, a copy of an article covering the case of Mercy Brown was found in a certain Irishman's desk drawer. You might know this Irishman as Bram Stoker, a man who wrote about what happens when a pale, imposing person is more than what they seem and is always hungry for healthy blood. Was Little Mercy subjected to the curse of the vampire? Or was it merely that she was buried in the dead of winter in a non-insulated cabin? something that Mr. Brown neglected to think of in his time of overwhelming grief. Perhaps Mercy wasn't infected by the vampire, but there could be others out there. After all, when we think of the vampire in pop culture, we think of a cursed beast that can't be let in unless he or she is invited. In one encounter of the Black Eyed Kids, a Reddit user by the username of Sarah Beth 11 who claimed that they hadn't heard of the legend before telling their own story and talking about what had happened to them, of all things, on Halloween. It was a slow day in their neighborhood, and the trick-or-treaters were few and far between. At around 10 p.m., she and her husband were watching a movie in the living room, the husband deciding to retire early for bed, leaving the Reddit user and her dog in the living room alone. It was at this time, Sarah Beth 11 heard a knock at the door. And right as this happened, the dog sprinted to the back door, clawing at it as in a state of panic. This was apparently highly unusual for the dog, as she was normally very calm, and her demeanor did not match this sudden outburst of bizarre characteristics. Sarah Beth 11 opened the front door to find two children, a boy and a girl. Neither were in costume, and Sarah Beth Eleven claimed she immediately felt dread and a lurch in her stomach that told her something was horribly amiss. She believed she was overreacting at first as the two children appeared normal. Although, she couldn't put her finger on it, but something felt off. Sarah Beth Eleven just could not figure out what it was. Neither child said trick or treat. Instead... They just stared blankly until Sarah Beth Eleven asked what the kids needed. The girl responded that they needed to call their mother and asked if they could come inside politely. Keep in mind this was in the 2000s, so Sarah Beth Eleven asked why they didn't call their mom on their cell phone. The two children looked at each other as if to speak, but instead said nothing. They both rotated to look at the woman again and responded by saying their cell phone battery died. Sarah Beth Eleven said she has already opened the door slightly without being aware of what she was doing. This compulsion scared her more, so she hesitated and asked the girl what her mom's number was so she could call the mother herself. The girl then changed her story and said her brother had to go to the bathroom. The little girl stepped into the light as if to come inside anyway. As she did, the woman could see the girl had all black eyes. No iris, no white of the eyes, nothing. They were just empty black void where the sparkling eyes of a child's should have been brimming with life. Without hesitating, Sarah Beth Eleven slammed the door on the child's faces, locking it more terrified than she had ever been in her life. She claimed she could hear the children crying and begging to be let in the home. The woman was too terrified to go get her husband, not wanting to lose sight of the children, Instead, she thought of calling her neighbor for help on what to do next. When she looked behind her, the dog was still in the living room, cowering and shaking herself. She claimed the children slowly walked away from the woman's house, down the street, and out of sight. Similarly, another Halloween encounter with black-eyed children came from another Redditor named Halloween Warning. He claimed that while putting out Halloween decorations in his neighborhood... He saw his neighbor was keeping his house dark and not decorating like he normally did. When he asked his neighbor why, the neighbor told him he was too scared to because of his last incident. When Halloween Warning asked what he was talking about, the neighbor said that in the previous Halloween, he had a pair of trick-or-treaters who were in their teens. Neither were dressed up and both gave the neighbor an ominous feeling. The feeling got worse within seconds, and the neighbor said he was so petrified but couldn't shut the door. 
one child spoke up and said they needed to come inside to call a parent for help. The neighbors said no, politely, but the kids asked if they could sit in his house and wait till their parents came to pick them up. After noticing the kids had all black eyes, the neighbor continued to mumble no and shut the door, feeling like he had dodged a huge bullet. When he looked out the peephole, only moments later, the children were gone. It was only after this incident that the neighbor looked up what had happened to him online and found these stories of black-eyed kids. The neighbor decided not to allow trick-or-treaters near his house anymore after that. Yet another Redditor, Akuna Avenger, claimed that while skipping school in Odessa, Texas with his friends, a blonde kid came running at them at full speed. The blonde kid collapsed to his knees and began panting. When the Redditor asked him what had happened, the boy froze and stopped panting. The boy slowly rose to his feet, snapped his head to look at the group. His demeanor and appearance completely changed. He was calm, tranquil, and had the eyes as black as night. This time, the black-eyed child had a new feature, rows of sharp teeth. The Reddit user claimed the boy grinned broadly to show his gleaming fangs and pointed directly at the Kuna Venture. The Redditor panicked and yelled at his friends to go. The boy booked it out of there before the fanged boy could say anything. So many of these stories have a few consistencies. Pale children, entirely black eyes, a calm, almost languid demeanor. They all seem to cause a sense of fear and dread. They all seem to demand being let into a car or home with increased urgency. With a few details that do differ for the most part, all of the tales seem to remain the same. Interestingly, they all seem to take place in suburbs or rural areas. Perhaps these beings know to strike where there are fewer witnesses. There is, however, one story submitted that shows what happens when you let the wrong one in. In the magazine Week of Weird, a woman from a small town in Vermont wrote in about her experience with these black-eyed children. In 2015, the woman was sleeping with her husband when they both woke up to a loud bang. The woman ran down the stairs thinking it was someone who had been caught in a snowstorm and needed emergency assistance. When she looked outside, all she saw were footprints in the snow. No person, no car, nothing. The woman went back upstairs to tell her husband what she had seen, and he decided to go downstairs with her to see for himself what was going on. When the husband joined his wife at the front door, they saw something that was casting a shadow. They both opened the door, saw a boy and a girl. Neither of the children were dressed for winter, and they both had odd haircuts. The couple were creeped out by the kids, but didn't voice their concerns to each other. Both were thinking that they were just overreacting. Surely there was a rational explanation. The couple asked the children where their parents were, and the children responded by saying they would come home soon. Following their maternal and paternal instincts, the couple invited the children inside, worried that their lack of warm clothing would make them sick. The couple made the kids warm drinks, asking them a series of questions ranging from asking why they're out in the cold to where their parents were, and the children would always respond, our parents will be here soon. The children were oddly calm and mature for their age, as well as having an odd sing song quality to their voices that the couple couldn't quite determine. Even stranger, the family cats, who were normally friendly and very affectionate, were hissing at the children and noticeably on edge. The husband began to become dizzy and feel sick. His wife asked him what happened and he said he saw their eyes. When the wife saw the children's eyes as well, she began to panic. There was no soul in those eyes, just a black pit of nothing. The wife began to feel ill as well. The children appeared to notice the state of panic that the husband and wife were in, so they politely asked if they could use the bathroom. After they left the room, the husband got a severe nosebleed. He wasn't prone to nosebleeds before this, so this new injury after the children arrived was all very concerning. The children reappeared in the hallway, telling the wife that their parents had arrived. Without another word, they walked out the door and stepped into an all-black vehicle. 
They were, in fact, two adults with two children, two men in black suits and sunglasses. They joined the children in their car and sped away without a single word. The husband's nosebleed and the wife's sickness disappeared immediately. Their troubles, however, did not. Shortly after this occurrence, the couple's cats slowly began going missing. One cat, the one that hissed at the child, was found dead in a pool of its own blood. Apparently, it was killed by a sudden internal mass of hemorrhaging. Prior to this, the cat was in great health and showed no signs of illness. The cat was also fairly young, so dying of old age didn't make sense. The husband, who was with the children the longest, suffered constant nosebleeds long after the children left. Like the cat, he had no prior health issues that caused this. What's worse, the husband developed terminal skin cancer. The couple had lived in Vermont. With long winters, the couple were indoors most of the year. During the summer, the husband always wore sunscreen. No one else in the family had skin cancer. This alone would be noteworthy, but still dismissible due to the fact that, unfortunately, cancer can happen to anyone. What is stranger about this case is that the wife also had long-term health issues after the visit from the black-eyed children. Her health issues ranged from nosebleeds to dizzy spells, all the way to extreme fatigue and fainting spells. Like the husband, there was no prior family history of these medical issues. The wife was the one who wrote into the magazines as a way to warn others to never let the black-eyed children in. Now, going back to the men in black detail that the husband and wife saw pick up these infamous children, if that description of the two men sounds familiar, it should. The men in black are often sighted shortly after alien encounters. Interestingly, children behaving strangely almost robotically, can be often correlated to alien activity, as are men in black sightings. This activity is pretty commonly cited in cases of areas with high children's disappearance rates, the Bennington Triangle, National Parks, etc. And in one case, in the 1950s, a Boy Scout troop went down to the Florida Everglades. The children and the scoutmaster claimed they saw a UFO hovering in the sky, the children all began to behave strangely, as if entranced by the ball of fire. The scoutmaster waved his arms to get the children's attention and called out to them to get them out of their trance. The kids snapped out of it, but only just in time to see the ball of fire spit out at the scoutmaster and singe his clothes and arms. The kids screamed and ran along with their troop leader but the damage had already been done. The scout leader had first degree burns on his arms and all the children in his troop corroborated his story about the ball of fire in the sky. Although doctors dismissed his claims of a UFO shortly after the troop leader's hospital visit, two men in black came to see the troop leader. They threatened him and told him bad things could happen to him and his family if he didn't tell the children that they were confused and saw something else instead. Not wanting to put his family in danger, the troop leader told the children at the next meeting that what they saw was nothing, and they imagined the whole thing. The children protested, saying that all of them had felt ill, had strange dreams, and felt like they were being followed after the incident. It couldn't be fake. We saw your arms get burned. But all the children had similar experiences and they all saw the same thing. The scoutmaster made them deny it over and over until they gave up. Why was it that the children had more of a visceral response to the UFO sighting than the scoutmaster did after the incident? Why did the men in black care so much about wanting the children to disbelieve what they had experienced? Why do children often get involved in UFO sightings and activity? The black-eyed children started out as a personal account story shared on the internet. Then, several others shared their own personal encounters with these black-eyed children. Then, even more similar stories written before were connected to the original black-eyed children tale and finally given a name. These tales spread across oceans and people all over the world had had similar experiences, but never given the experience a label or dared share it with anyone for fear of being mocked. 
The details across lands and time were all consistent about the children with dead eyes. Are these children a new phenomena, or do we just now have a name to give an oddly specific experience? As they need to be invited in, are they the undead who feed off the living and wear away at their health? Are they possessed by evil itself that wants to infect whatever soul it comes across? Or are these children possessed by something out of this world entirely that the underbelly of our own government and military keeps track of? What do you guys think? Be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below because I'd love to hear from all of you. If you're a fan of storytelling of the mysterious and supernatural, be sure to go ahead and smack that like and subscribe button for more content just like this. As always, I love you all, keep an open mind, and I'll catch you guys in the very next video.